Hey everybody, it's Brad. Um, uh, for this month's Floriani Club, we're going to be uh, doing realistic animal fur. Um, so, when you're uh, when you're digitizing an animal um, and you don't want it to look cartoony, uh, you kind of have to approach your your embroidery design um, like a painting. And uh, I'm not really the best artist in the world, so my results on this uh, aren't always that awesome, but um, the technique is pretty much the same. Uh, picking your colors is really important um, when you're when you're trying to create like a realistic looking animal, um, and that's one thing that I'm really not that great at. So um, all you sewers out there who are good with colors will probably be better at me, better at this than me, um, as far as the the colors go. Um, so I'm going to show you the technique for this. Um, so go ahead and open your Floriani and hit create a new design. And what you want is you want a, um, a picture to do this from that's, that's a painting of an animal. You don't want to do it from a photo um, because photos can have a lot more colors and it can be a lot harder to figure out um, exactly what colors you should use. So you want to stick to something that's a painting. Now I went ahead and just did a Google search for a wolf painting. And um, here it is. This is the one that I found. Um, so you could probably find the same one just by Googling wolf painting. Um, it'll be in there. Um, so here's here's our, our wolf. And we can see he's he's got all this nice long hair down here. And his snout has shorter hair. Um, and we're going to want to we're going to want to draw all this in. Uh, and we're going to do it with a running stitch. Um, but first, we want to lay down a base uh, fill for everything to go on. Um, so let's go ahead and pick what size we want our design to be. Um, for a, a realistic design, the bigger it is, the more challenging it is because you have a lot more detail to add in. Um, the larger it is, uh, so these things really lend themselves to smaller designs, uh, like around three inches or so. So what I'm going to do is set my um, my backdrop properties here. I'm going to set this to about 3.5, um, and that's going to make it so that my final design which is just going to be the head, is going to be about about three inches um, from tip to tip and from tip to tip here. Um, so let's uh, zoom in a bit here and take a look at what we're working with. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is put in a couple of fill areas to give us a base so that when we put our running stitch detail in, if there's any parts that we miss that we don't run over with a, a running stitch, there's not just like empty space there. Uh, but it doesn't have to be really dense. And it uh, we're going to do it in two pieces so that we can have the stitches go in two different ways. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then the other thing is I want to I want to add my own um, underlay, I want to put an, uh, my own outline underlay in first, uh, and then I'll let the, um, the automatic underlay that the fill stitch uses um, put its underlay in too. But the first thing I'm going to do is go to my line tool up here, and then just very rough on the inside of my design, I'm going to create a single outline. And the reason I'm doing this and not having the software create this underlay for me is because I'm going to actually have my fill be in two pieces so it would end up with two separate outlines underlays which is not what I want. I want to have one outline for the, um, the first part of the underlay uh, like this. So I want to have an outline and we're going to make that a running stitch and we can leave the default settings for this run stitch um, and now we're going to draw in our fill areas so I'm going to zoom in a bit and we're going to go ahead and just start drawing it in. We don't need to worry about the jaggedness of the fur here uh, because we're going to do that using a running stitch. So we're just kind of the outside edge here and I'm going to cut this off up here and then come down along the jawline like this. Okay, we're going to come down here, and then we're going to hit this close shape button to close it. Okay, so that's this part, and uh, we're going to go ahead and generate our stitches. 
So we're going to hit the standard fill down here. Okay. And I want to actually change the angle that the stitches are at for one thing. So I'm going to go to my shape tool. It's the third one down on the left. Go to my shape tool. And then this bar right here, it's got the two dots on the end of it. That's the inclination. That's uh, the direction that the stitches are going. And I'm going to make it so that these stitches are going this way. Okay. It doesn't do it generated until you hit the select tool. So boom, there we go. And now I want to change something else over here. I want to change my, um, my underlay. I want to change it from perpendicular to parallel so that the underlay goes along the same direction as the stitching. Uh, and we're going to apply that. And we're going to leave the other settings the same for that. Now for our fill, I want to change it from the pattern from a, this the pattern one. I'm going to change it to random, um, which any spots that kind of peek through, they'll have this random texture uh, that's going to look better than a flat fill. And then we're going to change our stitch length to 5 and increase our density up to about 0.8. Okay, and hit apply. Let's put that in 3D so we can see it. See how my stitches are going this way? They're nice and loose. Okay, and we'll change the color in a minute. Uh, all right, and then we're going to do the rest of him. Now we could do his ears as a separate, um, another separate fill, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think that it would make a big enough difference really to, to do that. So now we just go like this. I'm going to let this overlap a bit. Okay. I'm just left clicking using my line tool here. Okay, coming down. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit my close shape button here. Close the shape. Once again, we're gonna apply a standard fill to it. Um, I'm gonna change my stitch direction. This time I want it to be going this way, like that. Okay, and then we're going to change our stitch length to five, our density to 0.8, and our pattern to random. Hit apply. Change our underlay to a parallel. Hit apply. Let's back up and take a look at this. So <clears throat> even though these two are the same color, when I put this in 3D, you can see that they look completely different. Uh, and it's the exact same color that I have selected here. But because I've chosen this stitch direction for this one and this stitch direction for this one, the light reflects uh, a little bit differently. Um, and, uh, and you get a different effect. It's pretty cool that you can do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a color for this. Now I'm not the best at uh, picking colors. Um, I'm going to do, for the base, I'm going to do this light brown. Okay. Um, and that's going to be our base that everything else goes on. That might be, let's turn, let's turn it off for a second take a look. You know, that might be a little too brown. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to uh, more of a tan color. Uh, let's see, I don't have enough colors in this in this color chart uh, for um, uh, I think I have yeah embroidery which is 64 colors. So let's pick something that's got more colors. I'll pick um, well we're using Floriani software. We'll use Floriani colors, and this gives you as you can see way 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 more shades. All right, so let's find something that's Kind of tan. Ooh, that's way too tan. Then I can hit this little eyeball here to hide it. I need something with a little more red in it, I think. Nope. Oh, doesn't let you do it when it's hidden. <sighs> See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm terrible at picking colors. And that's like the most important part of this, really, is having good colors. <laughs> so I'm like exactly the wrong person to be teaching you how to do this. Uh, but that's OK. Um, so whatever, I'll pick this color. And if it's too dark, it's too dark. Uh, we can always change the color later. Um, but now we're going to do something strange. We're gonna, I'm going to turn off 3D, of course. And then we're just going to completely hide this altogether. This is going to be completely hidden. Um, turn, off, turn it off, and we're going to leave it off. Um, and then we are going to just go in and start the next color. Um, and the next thing that we're going to do is the eye. 
And we want the eye to be layered underneath all of this other fur. Uh, so we don't want that to be kind of sitting on top of the fur, because it's not how an eye works. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit bigger than it is on here, because we want it to really be um, a focus point of the design. Um, and I'm just going to use my straight line tool and just go ahead and draw the eye like this. Close my shape. I'm going to pick a color. Uh, I want it to be like bright yellow, even though the, in the design, in the in the original, it's not yellow. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it bright yellow because um, I want it to to really pop out. Um, so we're going to make that a fill, and then we're going to go ahead and um, turn the underlay off so we don't need any underlay. Um, and we're going to leave this. Hmm, it's pretty small actually. We'll leave the stitch length uh, at the default, I think. Okay, and then we're just going to hide it so that we don't even see it anymore. So that's two colors already that we have. Um, the third color that I'm going to do is going to be this kind of cream color on his snout. All right, and this is where we're going to get into um, using the running stitch. We're going to use the straight line tool, and we're going to create a running stitch here and we're going to draw our own fill basically using a running stitch okay so let's take a look this color is here it's here and then the most of it is here and then down kind of on his chest and then it there's a little bit of it in throughout the rest of his coat back here okay so we're going to want to get all of that um, or at least as much of it as we can um, so i'm going to consider this and this different colors. So we may end up with more than six colors, but we're going to have this part, this part, this part, and I'm doing this for me just as much as you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start. Um, all right, so here's how we're going to do this. You want your stitches to be pretty close together, but you don't want them to be so close together that you're pounding stitch after stitch on top of each other. I find about 600% to be a decent level of zoom for this, and what we're going to do is we're going to let this kind of come out from where okay so I'm clicking kind of fast it's it's hard to do this slowly um, so there I've just drawn this area in and I'm going to go ahead and generate this real quick so that you can see what what we're going for here we make it a run put it in 3d you see how that is kind of like it's kind of like a fill you know it's covering this whole area and that's what we're gonna do for this whole this whole time um, so I wanna make sure that I pick back up right where I left off so I'm gonna go back to my line tool and this was my last click so I'm gonna start there and we keep our stitches oops see that was a little too close together but it's okay this type of design is very forgiving of misclicks um, that's one of the nice things about it. All right, so now we're going to go in here. We're going to fan out these stitches, and we're going to work on. You know what? I'm going to back up because I want to do with the bridge of his nose, kind of like this. And this is really short hair here, so we don't want really long stitches for this. And then we're going to jump in here. See, my other thread that I pick for this is going to go over this. So it's okay that I'm jumping over that. And here we're continuing with short stitches. And because it's a painting, we can kind of see the direction of the brush strokes of the original artist, and we can follow them. Short stitches through this. Kind of at, you know, there there should be a, like a randomness to it, and that's what's going to make it look realistic. If everything's too robotic, it's not going to look realistic. And here, the stitches are getting longer. Up here, they're shorter.
thinking of the length of the coat. As I do this, I'm sorry I'm not I'm not talking as much. Um, I'm I'm kind of concentrating on my clicking. Um, so this is pretty much impossible to do on a touchpad. It's hard to do with a mouse, um, like just because of the sheer hand exhaustion that you're gonna run into. Um, if you have a tablet that's a touch screen tablet, that can really make this less painful. Um, I don't have one, so I'm doing this with my mouse. Oh, now I've lost where I am. If you lose where you are, like I don't know where my last click was. You can just click somewhere and it'll show you. There's my last deck. And then you hit the backspace key and you're back in business. All right, I'm going to jump back down through here. And you can hide your movement with this type of shading really well. It's one of the things I like about this. Let's see. I think I'm going to go up like this. And what I'm looking for is just anything that's kind of like this light tan color. I want to put some stitches on there. And we've got some of it back here. I'm being pretty sloppy here. Um, It doesn't really. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Nobody's going to be looking at at the original, you know. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting a little too sloppy right there, though. Let me zoom in a bit. You can see what I'm doing. I said I was going to consider that a different color, wasn't I? Yeah, it is It is a darker color. I'm just hitting backspace right now. Backspace, 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 backspace. Really, this over here... No, that's all right. I, my colors... I kind of... I, I put this color where I didn't really originally plan to. Well, that's okay. I'm gonna. I am. I'm gonna do this as a different color, though. So we'll do like a a, a lighter or a darker rather shade um, of tan for this. This is gonna be like close to a white. What I do here. All right. So we'll go ahead and with that, and we're gonna take these two. Oops, holding down the wrong button here. Control. All right. And we're gonna make them. Do like this sandstone color. Turn it into a run. And now for, for this run, we are going to be changing the default settings. Okay, We're going to change the stitch length to 4 and hit apply. Okay, And what that's going to do is anywhere that I click my points less than 4 millimeters apart, it's going to put the stitch the distance apart that I put my points. And anywhere that I do longer than that, I'm going to have at most a four millimeter stitch okay um, and that is only when you have drop run stitch at anchor turned on like if, if this is for some reason at a different setting um, then it it won't necessarily put a nail drill a stitch down every time you um, every time you click um, so make sure that that's on uh, when you're doing this um, okay so now we're gonna pick our next color uh, to do we're gonna get rid of this and I want to do this kind of more beige color up here and up in the ears. 
and there's a spot down here that we didn't get with this other color. Let me turn it back on. Yeah, so we want to get down here and do this beige color down and through here in his coat. So it's not going to be exactly like the original, but we're going to get up in here and down here and up in the up in the top. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn that back off. I'm going to start right here because I stopped right about here, so the machine's not going to have to travel anywhere. There's going to be just a trim at the end of the color. Um, grab this and I'm going to zoom in some more, and we're going to start. I'm going to start right about here. And I'm just drawing that in. Now let's, I'm using my arrow keys to move the, my view around. Okay. Now we're going to travel. kind of trapped here. I don't have anywhere to travel to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to we're going to cheat and skip to here and then just try to make sure we run over that spot with another color. And we're doing the fur and the ears. This part we're going to try to make kind of like a fill. I did that part already. I remember that. Oops. I just accidentally right clicked and generated my line. Um, so if that happens when you're doing this and you're not finished the area that you're drawing, um, it's okay. Just start back up wherever you stopped. And what I want to do with this is I actually, because I want to go down to this part, I'm going to need to travel down there. So to do that, because I don't want there to be a trim or a jump uh, anywhere in this whole design. Um, I mean, only trims at the end of colors. Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of come down here and we're going to have this other color come down and just have a little bit of it at a time and then I'm going to start doing it real heavy down here okay uh, to those areas that I wanted to, to cover up with this um, so let's get started um, my last stitch was here so we're going to go back over like this and then we're going to kind of have this kind of zigzag in here, blend in with the stitching that we put up here. I'm using my arrow key. Kind of have it in like this. And then the area that we're gunning for is down here. So remember, this kind of already has that color in it. So we're going to go, and here is where we're going to start doing it real heavy. Nice long stitches. See how I'm changing my stitch direction as I go? Now we're going to kind of travel down here. Using my arrow keys. a little bit of it in here, even though it's not really there in the picture. Um, yeah. Okay. Alright. So we're going to make this a darker shade. Make it a run. Um, put our stitch length to four, okay, and then we're going to hide this. 
All right, so the next color that we're going to do is this kind of reddish, reddish brown in this ear, in this part of his coat. And I think I'm going to do that on this part of the ear too. So let's go ahead and get our, our line tool again. And we're going to start. Now, ideally, I'd want this to be, I would want to start close to where I left off the other one. I didn't do that. Uh, ideally, that's what you would do. All right, we're going to have a little bit of this coming in here. And then we've got some of it around the eye. Anywhere that we see this kind of reddish color, we want to put a little bit of this. So he's got some of it down here. Short stitches here because his snout is short hair. Okay, come in like this. We don't really have a great path to, there's a little bit of it right here. Okay, and that gets us up into here. And we're kind of mimicking the brush strokes in the painting here. So whatever direction the brush strokes seem to be going is the direction you should be putting your stitches. Okay. Going up and around this. And the stitches, it's okay if they're kind of they look random. Um, that's that's only going to help. I mean, not so random that they're just all over the place. But if this was like a, a fill that we were doing, it would look it would look much flatter. It wouldn't look realistic when we're done. got some more of this red down here so we're gonna kind of cheat a little bit and we're gonna put some in where we don't really have it in the original now here are long stitches flowing along with the coat There's a little bit of it up in here. Hmm. I don't know how much of it I really want to put up there. It's hard to see it, <laughs> which areas are the same color when you've got all these dots all over the place. Alright, we'll call that the reddish brown area. Now I need to find reddish brown in the colors here. Here we go. Uh, it's probably a little too red, but it's all right. Stitch length to four and apply. Yeah, that probably is a little too reddish. Where's the browns? Here. Yeah. Sienna brown. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm going to leave it at. All right, we're going to hide that. Um, So now well now let's
let's go ahead and 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 try doing our um, our black our, our our defining kind of not really outline but it's kind of it's the thing that there's the most of uh, other than than our fill is going to be this this black and what you don't want to do is use true black um, because it's not going to look very nice so you do like a charcoal black or something like that you know like a dark 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 gray um, let's go ahead and uh, start it up. I'm going to start around the eye, I think. Um, or no, you know what? I'm going to start from the nose and go back. So we're going to do the nose, and we're going to do the nose kind of rounded like this, so we give it that rounded texture. And our stitches really need to be, our, our rows of stitching really need to be kind of close together for this to work. We don't want to be able to see the back under this. Okay, and now we're going to fill this area in. And if you look, let's travel back through here. I actually, I should have started here. What I should have done is started here and then gone through this way so I didn't have to backtrack. I'm learning to do this at the same time as you guys are, really. I am by no means an expert at this. Okay, so here we're going to do the eye. Oh, I need a backspace. We want this stitches to seem like they're radiating out from this area. define this area very clearly and then we're gonna do we're gonna jump down in here put some stitches in for the eyeball and then we're gonna come out here and that might not be dense enough what I'm laying down on here we'll just have to see when we're done now up here, we want to do this jagged. The hand is really starting to hurt. So if you're doing one of these and your hand is really hurting and you're not making a video tutorial on the internet, you should stop and take a break. No shame in that. It's a lot of clicking. Alright, now in here, I'm kind of just following along with kind of like the outline of where the black is. And then I'm going to go in and fill it like this. So I'm just kind of filling this in. Yeah, like that. Now I'm going to travel out like this. Okay. Anywhere that it's really dark, that's where I'm putting this color. And there's a lot of it. Huge amounts of this design are this darkness. And you want to follow the contour of the jaw here. It's very important that you don't end up with a wolf that looks like its head and its body are the same thing.
go up and do this part and work down from there. So I'm going to work my way up here. here. We're going to do these little bits coming off. I'm, again, I'm using my arrow keys to pan around the design. So when the design jumps like that, that's me hitting up, down, left, or right on my keyboard. Alright, now let's go in, fill in the inside. a lot of clicking. It's not hard, you know, it's just it's just a lot. <laughs> a lot of clicking. It's hard on your hand more than anything. So I'm shading this in. If I wasn't, you know, trying to finish this video, I would probably be doing this a little bit more carefully, but like I said before, you really it's 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 almost harder to do it slow. Oh. I don't know how I managed to do that. Go ahead and um, backspace. <laughs> Somehow I managed to have it click way over there. Uh, and then I was so zoomed in I didn't realize kind of how much more of this there was. Uh, I thought I was on the I thought I was at the bottom of it. That's the danger of being zoomed in. But that's okay. We'll we'll deal with it. So, um if you're getting bored of just watching me click, then I would skip forward about 5 minutes in this video to get to the next part this is just going to be more of me clicking and kind of following the contour of the wolf's coat. And just adding this detail in. And this is this is how the sausage is made, you know, for for designs like this. Now, I'm not I'm not claiming that I'm really great at this um, by any means, because um, I'm really not. Um, I'm not very artistic, and I literally just learned how to do this today. So I could use some more practice, I'm sure. But the the um, the underlying concept uh, this is is right. This is this is how this works. Um, Trail back up in here. Then down. I'm going to put a little more detail in here. Now, after we do this, we may realize that we need another layer of um, one of these other colors. Uh, it's certainly possible that we don't have uh, enough coverage, but we won't really know until we put everything together. So I've got enough of my black, I think, although, you know what, I need some up there, so I'm going to have to add that in after, I think. I'm going to add it in up at the top. Uh, but okay, let's go ahead and right-click. It's going to generate this. Uh, now I'm going to take this and make it a dark charcoal type color. Let's see, where's black in this? Here we go. Gunmetal gray, slate gray, black penguin, West Point. I'll do this dark gray. Hit run. Stitch length to four. And hit apply. 
Now let's put everything together and see what it looks like. So first we have our base coat, and then our eyeball, our sandstone color, our wood ash color, our sienna brown color, and our black. And with the exception of this part up here, you know, that's, that's not that bad. All right, let's get rid of the, um, the backdrop. Yeah. So, I mean, I could certainly have been more careful in my clicking. It was much better up here than towards the end here. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, you know, we, we've created this this fur look you can see in the muzzle, you know, uh, and and uh, this isn't um, a masterpiece or anything, but you'd sew it out, it'd be recognizably a wolf. I think that's my colors are really the problem here. I've chosen I've chosen poor colors. Um, let's see if we can make them look a little bit better. dark gray wolf. I really wish that I hadn't forgotten this part up here. I think that would help a lot. Um, what if we made him... No. Ugh. really don't like that. He's like a coyote. But you can see how completely different it looks with each one of these things that I choose here. Uh, so picking your color is really important. And I think that we really needed more um, more of the shading in this part. But here I just did this in, what's it been, 40 minutes? Um, and if I did it again, I'm sure that I'd be able to do it better. Uh, but that's the general technique of, of you, you put down your base, and then you layer on the, um, the running stitches, and just go and do it. And, and you really also, you really got to sew these things out, because they never are ever going to look good. Um, in the 3D view on this program, um, and it's not it's not Floriani Total Control U's fault. It's every program it does not render stitches the way that they actually look. Um, so you just have to sew them out and see what it looks like. Um, but you know, I'm satisfied with this. Could I have done it a little bit better? Um, you know, if I'd have taken my time, uh, probably. Uh, but you know, if you're making a design for yourself, you're probably going to spend a little more time um, being careful and making sure that everything. Uh, is perfect. Um, you know, to 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 make this better, what I probably would do uh, if I really wanted to have this design to sew out is I'd I'd put in the rest of the black up here, um, and I'd probably go in to this color here, this one, and kind of build that up a little bit more um, along this part, the chest of the dog and everything. Um, but anyway, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you get the general concept, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.